Hey folks, Mike here with You Betcha Outdoors, and today we are going to do a little pan fishing episode. We are in central Ottertail County. Uh, it is kind of the middle of November, and we are looking at pretty good ice conditions. We already have about six inches of ice here today, so we're uh, putting our efforts into finding a good school of crappies and sunfish. There still should be good standing weeds. Um, it should be pretty easy fishing today. So uh, let's get to it. <laughs> Uh, what we're fishing today is a real shallow flat, so it starts <clears throat> kind of a gradual drop off in the first 30 feet down to about 8 feet, and it stays 8 feet for a long ways. Now we start to see the contours dropping slowly. It'll be 9 feet here, and it'll slowly go to 10, to 13, 15 feet um, as we get to kind of the max distance we're looking at. And that's kind of our defined weed edge, so that's where we're going to set up. We're hoping that the fish are stacked in there. Um, we'll go a little deeper if need be, a little shallower also if need be. So kind of checking back and forth and we'll see how it goes. So this is just my second season now, kind of becoming dependent on a camera for searching. So what we're going to do here, I just chiseled the hole in. And we're going to drop the camera down to see if there's any sign of what we're looking for in terms of weeds or fish especially. I'll give you the footage from the camera too as we drop it down here so you can kind of see what it is that we're looking for. I don't expect a ton of water clarity here. There isn't much in the summertime. It does improve a little bit during the winter, but not enough to really get too excited about. So what we're looking for really is standing weeds that kind of create good shelter for the fish. And then we'd obviously love to see some fish on the camera as well. From Monday till Friday, you'll find me grinding, putting in a phony hour wink. I wake up before the sun's up, hop into my truck, and head out to my nine to five. By Thursday, I'm ready. Back in that Chevy, loaded down with all guitars. Punch out that time clock, gas up at quick stop, and get out on the open road. Oh my gosh, are we spoiled? I use an electric auger all season long. It's been a long time since I've had a hand auger. Buy yourself an electric auger. Whew. All right, so here's the plan. Uh, we're gonna go over with the camera, check all these holes. Uh, we don't have a ton of time today, only looking at a couple hours to fish. So I wanna be as efficient as possible with that time, pun intended. So we're gonna drop the camera down, try to find fish before we start uh, fishing for them. If we don't see anything that we like, uh, we're gonna move spots, which will be a little bit of a pain given how difficult it is to hand auger, um, but that's just kind of the basic part of this. I know a lot of people get frustrated with taking so much time for the search, but at the end of the day, it's guaranteeing fish action as opposed to uh, sitting and waiting, hoping something comes through. So uh, just a preference for each fisherman, uh, how they want to go about it. Um, I prefer to have a little bit more intel before I drop down. So the footage you're looking at now is what my aqua view shows. So we're just going to kind of run this string of holes here. So the first time you drop down with your Aquaview camera, you have to unspool all the line to get down to the bottom. But then as you're checking your next successive holes, instead of re-spooling it, just kind of pull it up with your hand, wrap it around your fingers, and that way you can move a little more efficiently, especially when you're fishing a flat, because the depth's not going to change that much. So you'll be able to get down and see what you need to see, and then move on quickly. So now again, I'll just pull the cord up. Wrap it around my hand and fingers, and move on to the next hole. Oh, there's a couple fish off in the distance there. Come and check out the camera. Definitely a sunfish there to the right. I'd say a sunfish there as well. So now you can see we found kind of the true edge here as we're looking at all kind of sand silt bottom with no real weed growth. There's a fish off in the distance. 
you could come check me out. There, you get the profile shot of that one. Yeah, both those are probably, that one probably goes two and a half, three pounds. This other one might be three and a half to four. wrapped in the transducer felt a little bit better but that's why yeah he is a little better probably goes six if you were hungry it would eat well, it's fun to be catching a few fish at least Oof. this one might actually be decent oh it's a crappie came tearing in. No wonder he felt a little better. There you go. Again, not huge, but definitely a fun fish. And they're still down there. Oh, a little crappie. Not quite the size we're after, but the right species. Real little guy. Let's see if that's not a sign of things to come in this hole here. So now we're in only eight feet of water, which seems shallow, but again, not necessarily knowing. Oof. I guess I'll stop talking. Let them decide what they want in terms of depth. That one absolutely hammered it. Another one there. That one robbed my plastic. It's frustrating when you're on a bite. All right, let's see if we can't grab another. We're on him now. Oof, just missed him. Hopefully there's a couple nicer ones mixed in here. Now we're upsizing a little bit. They are hungry. I have a quick show you in here, but we're gonna fire back down as quickly as we can. They are all over the place right now down there. This was our hope. Oh yeah, they're starting to stack up on my screen even. As quick as you can drop. So we're still not seeing that big size. that we're on them here makes me think they're around another one and they're so hungry yeah. I actually have a ultralight rip and wrap rigged up I'm tempted to go grab that I'm not going to give this a ton of time for fear that the school might move on. Just like that. Oh, that's pretty cool. I just caught this little sunfish and under the ice a pike tried to grab it right at the surface of the hole. That was cool. <laughs> uh, so much for upsizing. Hello, little crappie. There's a really nice mark on the camera down there, on the Vexlar. 
and they are just wicked right now darting up and down up and down all over the screen so it's clear they're feeding on something in this area oh boy well here comes the fight for what we were looking for this has got to be a northerner or something let's get that transducer out of the way much prefer to be tangling with the bass right now a little more guarantee that those teeth won't come into play i have not seen any sight of them yet there's not a lot of ice here so we should be able to get a sight of him before he's actually at the base of the hole it's a bass all right Pretty good size one. Not too shabby. See, he just buried that hook in his upper lip. I should say I did. There he is. Nice little two pounder. Send him back down the drink. So we moved in here a little bit shallower. Now we're in five and a half feet excuse me six and a half feet and we found the crappies again they're again not big we're talking about maybe eight and a half nine inches which certainly you can make a meal out of an eight and a half inch to nine inch crappie and it's really good in terms of the harvest to take more of those smaller ones so it's nothing wrong with that fish. The work we put in today, and that would certainly make it worth it. All right, well, we're gonna wrap it up there, folks. Hopefully you were able to pick up a couple of tricks from the video today. We'd appreciate if you'd hit that subscribe button follow along with us this winter as we try to bring you more content from the ice have a great day everyone tight lines